We talk a lot about Starlink, uh, rightfully so, but it's only one part of a huge commercial space explosion. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. And there are new applications for satellites every year. I got to talk about some that you may not even be aware of with astronomer Jonathan McDowell. There's the Planet Constellation, which uses CubeSat to image the entire Earth every single day. There's also a new way to measure the weather and a way to track ships and planes with real-time data. And the Internet of Things has constellations just dedicated to our little things in our home, like our Alexas, or even our Fitbits or Apple Watches. Satellites are fantastic. We are going to see the industrialization of space. And frankly, ultimately, right, 100 years from now, the sky's going to be full. We're going to lose the night sky and, and astronomy is going to have to be done off planet. Uh, and I think that's sad. But by then, maybe we'll be able to do it. Um, a lot of, you know, Starlink fans tell me, oh, why do you just move the satellites into the telescopes into space now? And there are so many reasons why that's just not feasible, you know, on, on the 50 year time scale. Right. much less the 10 year time scale. Some of the new applications that people may not know about, one of the big constellations of CubeSats, right, is the planet constellation, uh, planet in San Francisco. Uh, and they have, they have uh, imaging the whole earth every day. It's really good for news organizations, all right? Because you can get a satellite photo of what happened in Finland yesterday, right? This, the, whatever event happened, right? You can yeah. get a photo of it, right? Uh, what, you know, the US says that North Korea is doing this thing in this, this uh, processing facility public photo of that within a day, right? That news organizations can have. There's also less well known, uh, uh, the Spire Global Company, uh, which has its lemur system. And they, they have a couple of payloads on. One is um, what's called uh, GNSSRO, uh, which is um, radio occultation using navigation satellites. So what the hell is that? It turns out that if you look at a GPS satellite, as it, uh, if you're in space and you look at a GPS satellite that's also in space, but it's setting behind the Earth from where you are, its radio signal then for a couple of seconds goes through the Earth's atmosphere on its way to you, right? And so as you see the signal, it's like perfect signal, perfect signal, messed up signal as it sets, and then no signal as it's behind the Earth. That messed up signal is messed up in a particular way depending on the temperature and pressure profile of the Earth's atmosphere. Oh, and wow. so you can back out the weather. And so if you have like a bunch of these measurements, right, you can actually use this for weather forecasting, for, for weather <laughs> measurement. That's a whole new kind of weather satellite that's wow. now uh, uh, feeding in its data to the, to the weather predictions. Completely new application that, that, that people didn't think of a while ago. Wow. Um, another payload on these satellites is what's called AIS, Automatic Identification System, which is for tracking ships. Uh, so if you're a SpaceX fan and you're, you're looking on the web at, uh, there are people who go, okay, we wanna know where the, the drone ship is. Right, and we see that you know Ms. Tree and the fairing recovery ships and so on are in this particular part of the Atlantic. How does that website work that shows you where those ships are right now? Well, the ships have a beacon that go to a satellite that feed into this public database of where all the ship traffic is. And there's a similar one that's currently starting to be implemented. Oh, it looks like they docked, good. Uh, uh, that is um, that is for airplanes. ADSB is for airplanes. So if you remember, a few years back, we lost the Malaysian airliner, and it went off right. Yes, right, yes. Right, right. So, and, and it turns out that when you're in the middle of the ocean, right, right now, you may not know where you know, your home base may not know where you are. Right. But with ADSB, you will. You'll never have that problem again. You'll we'll track all the airliners and know where they are. Interesting. And wow. also, I mean, not just track, right, but, it, but black box data being streaming back in real time. So these are all, and those are all applications that just require these very small satellites. Then the more powerful ones, we said we have the Starlink, but we also have uh, in geostationary orbit, uh, the Inmarsat series that uh, provide you with high bandwidth internet if we ever go on a plane again, 
<laughs> which, you know, I, I kind of miss travel. Um, I do too. Recent plane flights that I went on in 2019, I sometimes had, you know, streaming internet in my seat, right? Right. And, and that's through Inmarsat satellites. Uh, and so just the level of bandwidth is now big enough that they can stream uh, high bandwidth internet to everybody in the plane. So there's all these new applications that come every year uh, uh, with satellites. The other big thing I didn't mention is IoT data relay. So IoT is Internet of Things, right? So it's all the little embedded devices in your Fitbit and in your, you yeah. know, uh, uh, or, or everything around your house. And, you know, and they flow data back to servers in the cloud, right? And that happens a lot sometimes over uh, little satellites that are relaying that data. And so that's a bit, uh, there's a lot of companies now that are deploying IoT constellations. I can think of, you know, six or seven different companies that have constellations of satellites that they're starting to deploy now, just dedicated to IoT data relay. What I used to tell people is, you know, 20 years ago, and for about, you know, 20 years, the, the, the story was, Space is about equally divided, one third, one third, one third between military, civilian, and commercial. And just in the past couple of years, and partly due to Starlink, but not exclusively, uh, the commercial has started to dominate instead right. of being an equal part. And I think that that's the future, that the, the, the commercial will dominate space. If you learned something, please do me a favor, hit that like button. Also hit subscribe. I'm bringing you new videos every single week. I'm really excited to share them with you. And I'm happy that you landed here on this channel. I'll see you soon.